Greetings and welcome to a series of lectures for Intermediate Algebra, Quadratic Equations. In this video we're going to discuss more types of equations but using the same tools in previous lectures to solve these equations. So in this lecture we're going to use everything that we know about math to solve a variety of quadratic equations. So let's look at one of the equations. Um, let's solve x plus 3 squared minus 2 times x plus 3 minus 8 equals 0. Your first thought might be to expand, combine like terms, and uh, simplify the left-hand side as best as you can. But let's not do that. Instead, let's consider substituting this since the since what I'm used to I should say is something that looks like x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. This kind of x looking thing looks like x plus 3. This x looks like x plus 3. So why not let's simplify this problem by let's let y equal x plus 3 and we'll substitute in wherever we see an x plus 3 we'll substitute in y. All right, x plus 3 squared that's going to become y squared minus 2 x plus 3 well x plus 3 is y so let's substitute in y minus 8 equals 0. Now certainly y squared minus 2y minus 8 is a lot simpler looking than x plus 3 squared minus 2 times x plus 3 minus 8. So let's go ahead and factor and solve our simpler or less complex quadratic equation. y and y will get us x squared, two numbers that multiply to negative 8 but add to a negative 2 So y minus 4 and y plus 2. Now let's solve y minus 4 equals 0 and y plus 2 equals 0. That means our solutions are y equals 4 and y equals negative 2. But I didn't start off with y. I started off with x's and in fact I started off with x plus 3's. So wherever I see a y now I'm going to substitute back in x plus 3. x plus 3 equals 4 and x plus 3 equals negative 2. Now let's solve for x. M minus 3 minus 3 x equals 1. Plus, uh, minus 3 minus 3 over here x equals negative 5. Okay. So we can find the solution by simplifying our problem a little by substituting in another variable. All right, that was one way of solving for the solutions. The other is let's go ahead and expand both x plus 3 and the negative 2 times x plus 3 and combine like terms. So we had x plus 3 quantity squared minus 2 times x plus 3 minus 8 equals 0 is our original quadratic equation. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the x plus 3 squared. That's going to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative 2 throughout. So negative 2x, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 minus 8 equals 0. I need to simplify the left-hand side. x squared, I have a 6x and a minus 2x, which is a positive 4x. I have a plus 9 minus 6, which is 3 minus 8 is minus 5 equals 0. And now that I have the left-hand side as simplified as I can get, I'm going to go ahead and factor. xx. X, plus 5 minus 1. 
Positive 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, but positive 5 minus 1 is positive 4. And let's solve. x plus 5 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, our solutions are x equals negative 5, and x equals 1. Same solutions, just two different methods of solving. Okay, so let's look at another quadratic equation and solve. First off, always has to be in standard form, or at least um, for the method that I'm thinking about solving, using to solve. 4 uh, x to the fourth plus 7 x squared minus 2 equals 0. Now, there are x to the fourth an x squared. That is not an x squared and an x, but I can use substitution. If I let y equal x squared, then y squared will equal x squared squared, which is x to the fourth, and I can rewrite this problem using my y and my y squared. 4 y squared plus 7y minus 2 equals 0. Now I'm going to use, uh, let's see, let's factor this. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 with a 7, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 8 but add to 7. I think 8 and negative 1 would do the trick. So let's write the middle term in terms of the 8 and negative 1. So 4y squared plus 8y minus y minus 2 equals 0. Now I'm going to take the first two terms and the second two terms and factor each of those terms, set of terms. 4y squared plus 8y will equal 4y times y plus 2. And negative y minus 2 will factor into, I can pull out a negative 1, factor out a negative 1, y plus 2. Each has a y plus 2 in common, so let's factor y plus 2, 4y minus 1, equals 0. So let's use our zero factor property to solve for y. y plus 2 equals 0. 4y minus 1 equals 0. y equals negative 2. And 4y equals 1, therefore y equals 1 fourth. But in the very beginning, we started off with x's, not y's. So let's go ahead and substitute back in. Wherever we see a y, we'll put an x squared. That means x squared equals negative 2, and x squared equals 1 fourth. Okay, x squared, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, the square root of x squared, the square root of negative 2, plus or minus, let's not forget that, on the right hand side, x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2, but I can rewrite that as x equals plus or minus i square roots of 2. Okay? All right. Now, let's do the same thing for our other possible solution. Take the square root of both sides. Right-hand side is plus or minus. x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth. But the square root of 1 fourth is plus or minus 1 half. So we actually have four possible solutions. x can equal negative 1 half positive one-half, could it be negative i square roots of 2 or positive i square roots of 2? You don't need the positive symbol there, I'm just using it for emphasis. 
Another type of problem that we can use this substitution method is when we have square roots in there. Now we have other means of figuring out square roots, but I'm going to use first substitution and then I'm going to use that other method and show you both ways. Right? I'm going to let y equal the square root of x. That means y squared will be the square root of x squared, which is x. And I'm going to rewrite my original equation using y's. Right? x equals y squared, so y squared plus x squared, or the square root of x are y's, plus y minus 6 equals 0. Now I'm going to factor. Two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add to a positive 1, y plus 3 and y minus 2. Let's solve for y. y plus 3 equals 0 and y minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, our possible solutions, y equals negative 3 and y equals 2. But again, my problem started with x's. It didn't start with y's. So wherever I see y, I'm going to substitute back in the square root of x. The square root of x equals negative 3 and the square root of x equals 2. And I'm going to solve for x. That means to get rid of the square root, I need to square both sides. X could equal 9, because square, uh, negative 3 squared is 9, or X could equal 4. But because I raised X to a squared power, I do have to verify that my solutions work for the original problem. So I'm just going to verify my answers. Okay. For x plus the square root of x minus 6 equals 0, let x equals 9. Therefore, 9 plus the square root of 9 minus 6, does that equal 0? 9 plus 3 minus 6, 9 plus 3 is 12 minus 6, and 12 minus 6 is 6. 6 does not equal 0. So x equals 9 is not one of our solutions. So let's try x equals 4. 4 plus the square root of 4 minus 6, does that equal 0? 4 plus square root of 4 is 2 minus 6. 4 plus 2 is 6 minus 6, and 6 minus 6 is 0. So 4, x equals 4, is our only solution. x equals 9 was an erroneous solution. The other way to solve this problem would be to isolate the radical. So let's move the x and the negative 6 over to the other side. So I get um, square root of x equals negative x plus 6. Now I'm going to square both sides, giving us x equals x squared minus 12x plus 36. Let's move everything to one side. x squared minus 13x plus 36 equals 0. And now we can factor our quadratic equation here. x minus 9, x minus 4 equals 0. Let's solve each factor to 0 using the 0 factor property. x minus 9 equals 0, therefore x equals 9. x minus 4 equals 0, therefore x equals 4. Again, because I did this squaring both sides method, I do have to verify both solutions. And the process is exactly the same as before, so x equals 9 was not a solution, and x equals 4 was our only solution. All right, let's say you toss an object into the air with an upward velocity of some speed. 
uh, we'll say that it's 12 feet per second. We're throwing it from the top of a building that is H feet high. We want to know what time it takes for that object to hit the ground. So here's our formula we're given. 16t squared minus 12t minus h, being, being the height of the building, equals zero. And I want to know, I want to solve this equation for t. Well, this is just a quadratic equation. That's it. Quadratic equation. So I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula to solve for h. Now, a quadratic formula, we usually use x equals but I'm going to use t equals because I'm solving for t here. a is 16, b is negative 12, and c is negative h. I'm not going to worry that there's an h in there. I'm just going to keep solving for t. So plugging all of the a, b, c into our quadratic equation, the values for a, b, c, minus, pardon me, negative, negative 12, plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times 16 times negative h all over 2 times 16. I'm going to simplify this as much as possible. Negative 12, negative, negative, negative 12 is positive 12. Negative 12 squared is 144 and negative 4 times 16 times h is going to be a positive 64h. 2 times 16 is 32. Now, I can factor the radicand here. If I factor, I'm going to end up getting 16 times 9 plus 4h. 16 is a perfect square, so I can pull out perfect square here, which is 4 squared, that will give me t equals 12 plus or minus 4 square roots of 9 plus 4h all over 32. But I can factor the numerator, I can pull out a 4 out of a 12 and a 4 out of a 4, and say 4 times 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 4h all over 32. And the 4 and the 32 can reduce giving me t equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 4h all over 8. Now how does that help me? Right? I didn't necessarily solve for time, but if I am given the height of the building, I just plug that in and I'll know exactly what time it will take for that object to hit the ground. Generally speaking, you will have two values of t, Remember with our determinant, we will either have two complex answers, two irrational answers, two rational answers, or one rational answer. Generally we'll have um, two rational answers because this will be either two rational answers or two irrational answers because the determinant here will be positive. The building height is always positive. So this value will always be positive. Because one might be, if we solve for t, we have 3 plus this positive number equals 8, 3 minus this positive number minus all over 8. We're just looking for the value of t which is positive. The t that is the negative, we don't care about because time isn't negative, time is positive. Alright, so that's it for this lecture. Why don't you go ahead and try these problems yourself. Go ahead and solve uh, 3 times x minus 5 squared plus 14x minus 5 minus 5 equals 0. Try using the substitution method here. Likewise with number 2, 2x plus the square root of 2 equals 15. First set it in standard form and then go ahead and use substitution. I think it will work for, for you. And then solving the third problem, go ahead and solve using the quadratic equation. I want you to solve for x. So a will be 1, b will be 2y, and c will be y squared. 
and go ahead and solve for x. So until next time, be seeing you.